there's one other type of monopoly that we're going to explore, and that's called a natural monopoly. And, and the characteristic of a natural monopoly is, okay, so a patent monopoly uh, is a monopoly because it has a barrier to entry, and that barrier to entry is the patent on the product itself, okay? The, a natural monopoly also has a barrier to entry, and that barrier to entry is high startup costs, okay? So uh, what is a natural monopoly? It, well, typically utilities uh, are, are natural monopolies, okay? So for instance, uh, the, the power uh, company that provides your house with power, that is a natural monopoly. Uh, it, you can't just call up one month and say, oh, I don't, I don't want to use your power this month. I want to use this other company's power. You can't do that. Um, and if you think about how power is generated, you know, you need a power plant. You probably need to dam up a river and create a lake, a cooling lake. Um, you have to put in all your substations. You have to run all your power lines. You may even have to build... Uh, railroad spurs to the power plant. Uh, if it's if it's a coal-fired plant, uh, you you would have to uh, 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 build substantial infrastructure for natural gas. If it's a natural gas-fired power plant, um, you know you're you're talking billions of dollars of investment, literally, before even the first kilowatt hour is produced. Okay, and the and the and the company doesn't doesn't. Uh, 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 pay for that startup cost uh, out of its pocket. Uh, it essentially draws a loan for the most part is the way you could think about it. So a company draws a loan for billions of dollars and it has a fixed payment on that loan. So the startup cost is then translated into high fixed costs for this firm. Now most utilities, once the uh, 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 utility plant is set up, once the wires are run, the marginal cost of, connect, of connecting any particular home is typically the same. So another unique characteristic about a natural monopoly is it has low and constant marginal costs. Okay, so let's graph that. Now, like any uh, uh, market demand for a product, natural monopoly faces a downward sloping demand curve uh, for its product. You know, you can even think of energy. Uh, if, if the price per kilowatt hour rises high enough, what do you do? Well, you cut back your thermostats in your house. In other words, your quantity demanded of power will fall as price rises. So it, it, it faces a regular downward sloping demand curve that satisfies the law of demand. Uh, therefore, it's going to have a marginal revenue curve that's also downward sloping. But the difference in a natural monopoly comes in its cost model, okay? So it faces a marginal cost curve that's relatively low and horizontal. It's constant over Q. To hook up one house costs the same as the hooking up another house to electricity once you get all the wires and everything run. Uh, now, because it has constant marginal cost, by definition then, that means the marginal cost also equals the average variable cost. Think about it. If, if it costs $300 to hook up a home, uh, and you hook up three homes at $300 each, well, the average variable cost is $300 uh, per home. Uh, you hook up a fo fourth home, well, it costs $300 to hook up that fourth home. Okay, what was the average cost of hooking up that fourth uh, of all four homes? $300. So marginal cost in a natural monopolist model also equals average variable cost. The difference is in the average total cost curve because the average total cost curve really is simply uh, mapping out the average fixed costs for the firm. And if you remember, average fixed costs at low Q are very large. Average fixed costs at high Q are very small. Furthermore, furthermore, 
the uh, because they're a natural monopolist, they have high startup costs. This average total cost curve is going to sit up pretty high. Okay, so they're going to have huge average fixed costs at low Q, and those average fixed costs are going to go to zero as Q goes to infinity. Now, like any firm, this firm's incentive is to maximize its profit. So it will produce at an output level where marginal cost equals marginal revenue. Okay? And it will charge the marginal benefit for the product. So that is the natural monopolist price level that it would charge. And this is the natural monopolist quantity of power generated. Okay? We can already see an issue here. And the issue is we have a huge deadweight loss if the monopolist is allowed to do that. And this deadweight loss, proportionately, is, is far greater than even under a patent monopoly. Why is that? Because under a patent monopoly, the marginal cost curve comes up like this. So only a portion of this triangle is deadweight loss under a patent monopoly. The triangle proportionally is far greater with a natural monopolist. And that's a problem. It's a problem because this means that there's a lot of people that aren't getting electricity because they can't afford it. They're priced out of the market. The efficient output level then, the output level that maximizes total surplus would be out here. Okay, That would be the efficient output level. The problem with that output level, however, is then as you can see, if that output level is produced, then that means this would be the efficient price equal to marginal cost. But then the firm would make a loss and it would go out of business. Okay? So there are two ways that a natural monopolist is regulated by the government in order to ensure that people who need power get power, okay, but also to ensure that the monopolist doesn't go out of business while providing that power. So let's look at, a, at, at the two ways that a natural monopolist is regulated in order to uh, get rid of that dead weight loss. Uh, one way is called average cost pricing. average cost pricing okay and the way average cost pricing works let me just redraw that natural monopolist model again the way average cost pricing works is that the government steps in and forces the monopolist to charge a price equal to its average total cost. Okay? What does that mean? Well, that means, number one, there's more power that is going to be supplied by the uh, company uh, than what would have existed under profit maximization. But it also means the price is high enough that the company doesn't go out of business, okay? In other words, total revenue equals total cost at that price level, okay? Problem here, however, is that there's still a dead weight loss, but that dead weight loss is easily addressed because these are the people who can't even afford to pay average total cost for the power, and they can be directly subsidized. Okay, so these may be welfare recipients or, or whatever, and they can they can have direct power subsidies uh, sent to them 
uh, and process through the power company in order to provide power to those individuals and increase the amount of power uh, that the company produces. Okay, So that's average cost pricing. We typically see average cost pricing in communities um, that, that uh, uh, are not extremely wealthy communities. And the reason is, is because remember, if this is a subsidy to the recipient of power, uh, then the taxpayers have to foot that bill for that subsidy, right? Uh, and this is a relatively small subsidy, especially when compared to the next regulatory policy, which is marginal cost pricing, okay? So the next way, the second way that a natural monopolist is regulated is through something called marginal cost pricing. And marginal cost pricing, just to redraw the graph again, Marginal cost pricing is when the government comes in and forces the firm to charge a price no higher than marginal cost, okay, and produce at an output level where marginal cost equals demand. And in this case, okay, as we stated before, total surplus is maximized because then this becomes all consumer surplus and that's your total surplus this entire triangle the problem here is though that the price of the product okay at marginal cost is not enough to cover the industry cost of providing the product meaning that the firm will eventually go out of business but under marginal cost pricing, to keep the firm from going out of business, the government essentially steps in and pays the firm a subsidy equal to its total fixed cost. Okay, now this occurs many times in communities that are wealthier communities, and the reason is, is because obviously in, with a wealthier community, they can probably afford higher tax rates and therefore uh, be able to afford this subsidy, because we, as we can see, this essentially means the taxpayer is paying to build the plant, to dam up the river, to create the reservoir, to uh, uh put in all the power stations, etc., etc. In other words, all the fixed costs of providing this product are paid for by the taxpayer. The firm then, the electric firm then, simply becomes an operator of the facility, and in essence, the taxpayer owns the facility. Okay? But again, this is this this means substantial tax rates and many times in poor communities uh, they just can't afford that much uh, uh, in taxes so you'll generally see marginal cost pricing in wealthier communities average cost pricing in poor communities